What is happening guys? Cowboy here with some Mech Warrior Online and today we are taking a look at the King Crab. Now the King Crab is one of the biggest and baddest assaults in the game. It's at a hundred tons, only two other assaults weigh as much as this bad boy. And man, I have fallen in love with it. I, I've barely even been playing my Maulers. This thing just gets up into battle and just absolutely wrecks. Aptly, I've named it the Destroyer. So. Uh, to go into our mech build in particular, the variant we are working with is the KGC-000B. And the main reason for that is we have a 20% ballistic velocity quirk, which is going to be really, really helpful with our loadout. Uh, on top of that, we also have ballistic cooldown and then energy cooldown as well. There's also some missile bonuses, but we won't be taking advantage of those. For the skills we have on, we actually don't have any of the other King Crabs. So, as you can see, we only have the basic loadout on this. Now, hopping on into the Mech Lab, first thing you're probably going to notice is we got four AC-5s on this baby. Now, Quad AC-5s is a very well-known setup for just, you know, being tons and tons of raw power. And initially, I had wanted to run dual AC-20s on it. And don't get me wrong, dual AC-20s is absolutely devastating. You're looking at 40 damage, but at the same time, you are looking at 12 heat. And that's a lot of heat coming out. Now, in comparison, running four AC-5s, we're looking at 20 damage and only four heat with a much lower cooldown. So ultimately, what I ended up discovering was just that in the thick of combat, I couldn't fire off the AC-20s like on cooldown without going over my heat limit, where I can with the AC-5s. So we ended up going down to four AC-5s, and they've worked out very, very well for me. Now on top of that, we of course have three medium pulse lasers in the right torso. I ended up taking those over the large mainly because of the tonnage. We're looking at two tons per laser versus seven tons per laser. And with that lower weight, you can see we're almost capped out on armor on every single piece. Sacrificed a little bit on the back side of the right and left torso. Uh, as for our ammo, the majority of it is located in our left torso, protected by a case, of course. And then I have one ton in each foot and one in the head, just in case the left torso goes to crap and I lose most of it. On top of that, of course, we are running endo steel and then the double heat sink. And the last thing is we have an AMS equipped with one ton of ammo in the center torso, just because we are a lot slower. And because of that, we want to have a little bit of protection if, you know, the constant barrages of missiles start coming our way. Looking at our modules, we are running an advanced seismic sensor, and this is going to be really helpful, especially in a slower mech, because it's going to make sure that nothing is able to kind of creep up on us. Uh, as for our weapon modules, AC5 cooldown, and then medium pulse ranger range, and that's all it takes to turn this thing into an absolute beast. So we're going to jump into quick play, show you what this thing is all about. Uh, in general, I average roughly 500 damage per game with the King Crab. Um, really good matches, it's easy to hit upwards of seven to 800 damage, and even on kind of bad matches, um, you know, we'll usually see damage in like the 300 range. So definitely a very, very powerful mech, and Viridium Bog is an excellent place to showcase that. So either way, I'm probably gonna skip past the rest of this load, so sit tight and we'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so we're dropping on in. And one thing I didn't mention are the firing groups. So, with the crab in particular, firing groups are very important. And as you can see, I have two AC-5s in firing group 1 and two AC-5s in firing group 2 while my lasers are in the third. And the reason for that is because the crab is a very, very wide mech. You know, just looking at us and how, how wide we are, um, there's going to be a lot of times where you may only be able to hit your target with one of your arms. So, because of that, put those into two separate fire groups and you'll end up saving yourself quite a bit of ammo that you would have ended up wasting otherwise. So we're just going to advance up here with everyone. We'll probably have a clash right around D4. Well, maybe we're going to be flanking around. I really like running heat on this map, helps to see through all the crap, but we got nothing, no visuals so far. Where are they? Oh. 
target acquired. There he is. Let's get up behind this tree, get ourselves a little bit of cover. New target acquired. Oh, there they all are. All right, I got that as cover now. I'm flip around back up a little bit. Incoming missile. Avoid the inevitable missile barrage. What do I have back against me? Tree. Back up just a bit. to avoid almost all those missiles. Acquired. <clears throat> this dude is just sitting here taking a beating. Back up, man. Can't let them just wail on you like that. New target acquired. Acquired. I could push up, but I'd be <clears throat> be kind of a risky Target advance. Acquired. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's one down. Sorry, 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 sorry. You're fine, man. I got that one that was right there. New target acquired. I'm gonna advance up towards D4 if someone can give me some support at D4. Oh god, the missiles. Alright, here we go. I got a little bit of cover here. New target. Try and acquired. flank onto this guy. Hit them from behind. Flank all the way around this shell. Ooh, no, no, no. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Ooh. <sighs> Down into the gully we go. Did not mean to fall down here. Did not want to fall down here. <clears throat> and now we have a long run around to get to them. One good thing about this is coming up behind them with a king crab, I'll be able to really kind of wreak havoc on them. I mean, this isn't a mech that you would typically try to flank a team with, I, and I didn't really mean to, but we fell, and now we have no choice. We have rest of our team is kind of pushing up as well. Acquired. New target acquired. New target acquired. New target acquired. You get out from behind that damn tree and come here. New target acquired. Target acquired. Target destroyed. New target acquired. Another one down. Acquired. Let's advance up on this one. We took some heavy damage to the core, but we took out quite a few. And if I can come up on this guy right here. Target destroyed. Ooh, nice job, team. Target acquired. Target destroyed. 
Did they go down? Yeah. Thought I saw one over this way. No, there's only one left. Man, yeah, we just cleaned up. Yeah, and looks like we're gonna clean things up right here, go to the base, cap it, and call it a day. Enemy base is being captured. I really want to find the last guy. I just want to blow him away. Just just to pad the stats more. I mean, I doubt he'll come for the base. He might. Enemy base is I would. Captured. If I was him, go out in a blaze of glory. Don't hide and let us take your base. That's the coward's way out. Enemy base is being captured. Like the little lightweight just sprinting around in circles. Enemy base is being captured. Base is being captured. <laughs> the guy ran for our base? Like, it's done, man. It is done. So let's see them stats. And taking a look at the team stats, highest damage on our team by a pretty healthy margin at that. So either way, guys, hopefully this uh, gave you a decent idea of what the crab is capable of. Like I said, this thing is an absolutely devastating mech, especially when played right. And, you know, ideally, I, I would have preferred to stay on the front line there. Ended up kind of slipping off, but even then, being able to flank around ended up working out in my favor. Popped off quite a few of those other pilots. So, either way, thanks for coming on by. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the crab, and we will see you the next time that we bring on out another mech.